All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. In summary, the full EIA study is a far more significant effort than the preliminary assessment. Um, it is the same um, almost, but the preliminary assessment, just from the word itself, it's only preliminary. But the full EIA study is um, more detailed. Um, it is reserved for activities for which screening or preliminary assessment shows that significant impacts are likely to happen. And the purpose of the full EIA study is not, um, is not to find um, the impacts. Um, it's not to find the impacts um, that will not be significant. It, its purpose is to allow um, an informed decision to be made um, about with... Um, let me rephrase that. Its purpose is to allow an informed decision to be made about which significant environmental um, impacts may be accept acceptable to obtain a particular development objective. Um, in, in doing the EAA, um, we, can, we can define, um, we can study as to if the environment will be able to hold its environmental impacts. If it's... Um, there's a certain term for that. Um, um, if the environment can hold or will be able to um, accumulate or will be able to acquire, um, um, let me rephrase that. I'd say, um, the, I'd say the main purpose of EAA is for us to know if the environment will still be able to hold and be able to do its functions even if there is an adverse impact to the environment in connection to that study or to that proposed study or activity. Um, as we all know, um, uh, the environment or, for example, a certain ecosystem cannot, um, cannot exactly do its function if it's... Um, if it's um, I think I can I can exam I can uh, explain this better if I'll give an example. Um, uh, just give me a second. All right. Um, let me give you an example. Um, for example, we have a lake. So on that specific lake, um, there are um, we have a lake, and then um, the lake can only take as much as pollu pollution um, for the lake to be able to recycle and do its function um, the, pollu uh, the pollution that is coming into the lake. So we have a lake and then there's a pollution coming in. And even if there is a pollution coming in, um, yeah, the lake can still um, recycle, can still undergo its um, nutrient cycling with the specific um, amount of pollution that is um, being inputted into the lake. However, if there is too much pollution already in um, the lake and the lake cannot perform its, um, its uh, nutrient cycling anymore because there is too much pollution um, that is being inputted to the lake, then therefore, it will come to the point that the lake is already a polluted one. It's because the lake um, could, not, um, could not accumulate anymore the pollution or the pollutant that is being inputted into the lake. So, um, in connection to EAA, the main purpose of the EAA is for us to predict and for us to um, quantify, at least uh, potentially quantify the possible impact of a certain project or a certain um, 
activity. And if we know already the specific or the possible or potential impact of that, um, of, the, of the proposed activity or project, then therefore we can find ways to mitigate those impacts in uh, such a way that we can still assure that the environment, the specific environment, can still hold its functions when it comes to, um, for example, and nutrient cycling or when it comes to accumulating these adverse effects. How, uh, however, in which if the adverse effect of the proposed project or impact is too much, um, its impact is very adverse and the environment will not be able to uphold or will not be able to um, do its function and will not be able to rehabilitate itself because of the adverse impacts, then therefore, DMB, EMB DNR will not likely issue you an ECC or an Environmental Compliance Certificate because um, based on the assessment itself, um, the impacts, the potential impact is so adverse that the environment per se could not rehabilitate itself. And, and even if there are mitigations or mitigating activities that you propose, uh, but still based on assessment with a DNR or with a, D, with a DMR, DNR EMB, if they assess it in a way that, um, you know, it is, it will not compensate, um, the mitigating measure will not compensate with the, uh, on how the environment can, um, um, can rehabilitate itself, then therefore, um, EMB will decline your application. So that's the purpose of the EIA full study. Um, again, um, for us um, to allow an informed decision um, that will be made about which environmental impacts may be acceptable to obtain a particular development activity. All right. So who is involved um, in the EAA? So of course, the sponsor of the activity, um, it's usually the commission, commissions or conducts the EAA, uh, the, what they call it as the sponsor of, uh, sponsor of the activity. Of course, the regulatory uh, agencies or review authorities, that would be the DNR, specifically the EMB or the Environmental Management Bureau, which is under DNR. And of course, the broad-based public, um, which is part of the study. So, for example, uh, communities like men and women, the civil society, and of course, the private sector. Um, it also involves uh, POs or people's organization. So, how can we uh, make um, our EIA effective? So, EIA must be an integral part of the project development cycle. Um, the EIA should not end um, as to uh, when the project or the activity is already conducted and the project is already built and it's already there, the EIA, the EIA must have a develop, project development cycle. Like for example, the pre-construction phase, the construction phase, um, the post-construction phase, and the ad abandonment phase. The EIA should involve those phases and not end um, when the project is already built or it's already done, no. The AIA will involve or, or, or it will um, integrate the project cycle, the project development cycle, um, in which AIA is um, undertaken early enough to affect um, the project design and it should have a mitigation and monitoring um, developed in the AIA process is being implemented. Um, if there are impacts, environmental impacts along the way when the project is already um, on its um, how do you call this, on its implementing stage and there are environmental impacts that was not, um, that was not studied or was not predicted during the AA study, then therefore um, that specific impact should be integrated into the EAA or into a, um, um, into integrated into the mitigation and monitoring process even if it was not included in the full EIA study. In which later on, if that is the case that when you are implementing your, or the project is there already and it's already um, on the works, um, yeah, it's already implemented and there is an environmental impact that was not, um, that was not indicated in the EIA. Therefore, when you, when you made your EIA, it, uh, you, it was not studied well enough. 
because you were not able to predict that specific potential impact. So next is the AI must be honest. Um, the full AI study must consider real alternatives and impacts must be assessed honestly. Um, it's just like, it's not like, you know, just putting it there and putting, you know, less impacts for your study to be accepted or for your study to be issued with ECC. No, you should be as much as possible or actually not as much as possible, but you should be honest. And then, um, of course, your EAA must be transparent and accessible. The EA products must be clear and accessible to all K actors. If you have a project and somebody, anybody that would ask uh, for a copy of your EAA, then therefore you should be um, transparent and you should give that specific person or whoever person that is interested with your project, you should give that EAA study. There are cases, um, when I was in undergrad, um, um, one of the projects or one of the activities that our professor asked us is um, um, for us to secure an EAA study. So that time, during my time, um, um, we focus on hospitals. So on each hospital in, in Tacloban, uh, we surveyed each hospital and we asked for an EAA study because you cannot really build a hospital without an EAA study. Um, yeah, because every major project requires an EAA. But however, there are hospitals that did not give us their EAA, um, their EIS or their EAA study. I don't know why they did not give any of that. I don't know if they are trying to conceal anything, but supposedly um, your EAA again should be transparent and accessible. Whoever it is, even you know a, a certain stakeholder or a certain person or whoever that would like to access your EAA study, you should be able to give a copy of it. Yeah. All right. Do you have any questions so far? Questions so far? I'm here. None? I'm good. Are, how about the others? Do you have any questions? That's all for two. All right. Um, we will take a 10-minute break. Earlier, we took a five-minute break. This time, we will take a 10-minute break.